But if, if we were, if I were to ask you tonight to, would you describe God to me? Probably every one of you in the sanctuary, and I know we're going to look at it from a biblical standpoint. We're going to look at, at, at God and who He is. But we will probably all, with a little slightly different perspective, deliberate on who we think that God is. Because to each of us, uh, our perspective of God is, is a little bit different. We want to characterize Him with His qualities that differentiate Him from being human, His qualities that differentiate Him from being uh, different than any other God that is worshipped or, or, or given uh, uh, time to. We would try to look, uh, list His attributes that describe and express the very nature of who He is. And uh, so from my perspective, I see God as being this. Uh, I see God as being a very good God, a very uh, giving God. Uh, I, I see Him as really being the supreme giver. We look at the Trinity and we see that the supremeness of what was given as God gave of Himself sacrificially. And the Word of God says that He gave His only begotten Son. Hey, I'm not, you know, there are some days... Your kids can try your patience, right? But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in the business of giving any of them up. Uh, you know, I, I want that. Uh, but God gave His only begotten Son to be, grow Himself in flesh. So it, it's, it's a huge thing as we think about that. Uh, the sacrificial love, no greater sacrifice has man ever known that God is love and that God gives till it hurts. And the Word of God tells us there in Matthew, I love this, uh, I, I, uh, that, that if we ask and if we seek and if we knock, God's a giver. The answer is going to be given to us. Matthew 7, 7 and 8 reminds us of that. And uh, that uh, He gives because He is a very benevolent God. And He loves to give until we are satisfied. And I thank God for that. We've all experienced that here the greatness of the giving of God. And uh, I would say that probably much, if not all of us in here, fell in love with God because God gives. Guys, get an amen? Yeah. I fell in love with God because God gave. We know He gave His only begotten Son. We know He can do things for us that, that we could not do. And I really think that's what makes God so attractive to the sinner because He is a giver. And He gives to us and He loves us. And uh, we think about His loving and His giving nature. And so I, I don't want anyone here to think this evening that Brother Seville is in any way trying to abolish or cover up or shadow the giving and the lovingness of God. Because certainly God is that and everything that we can think of. But I want you to know that uh, it's not popular, it's not going to fill churches. Uh, the message that, that, that I, I'm going to share this evening in Bible study, it, it will never uh, fill this building to, to, to the capacity of breaking new ground. But God is also a taker. He is a taker. And uh, I know that that probably doesn't seem like it kindles revival fires, but it does. That God is a taker. And uh, it's sometimes hard for us to swallow. Uh, sometimes we shut away from the idea and we lock up in a vault somewhere that God can take away as much as He can give. And uh, it's, it's difficult. So Job knew all about this. Job knew about that side of God that was a giving God because really in his life, he knew about wealth. He knew about increase. That's, that's Job. You look at the beginning part of Job. I mean, you see everything taken away. But our mind is also left with the idea and the knowledge that Job had a lot that was given to him. He had great wealth and he had uh, the cattle and he had land and, and, and he had position and respect. He has ten children. And, and can you imagine what that does is he has a huge family. Huge families have cloth. You know, for the most part, if they're functional, they know they, you know, it, it's amazing. Uh, seven sons and three daughters. Uh, and so Job knew about the goodness of God. But all in one day, he was going to find out about the counter part of God that's taken away from him. 
So that's the tough part. How do we answer that? How do we answer that for ourselves? When we say about God taking, you know, we feel that taking away. Hey, listen, every one of you here know, know, knows what that's like. You say goodbye to a loved one that you would just rather not have said goodbye to. Some of you have said goodbye to relationships that you would have rather not have said goodbye to. Some of you in here have no money greater in greater ways than what you know now. And, and so the season of it is over and God says move on. And uh, you know, uh, there, there, there are just different things in our life where we, we are experiencing the taking away uh, from, uh, that God gives. And so Brother Craig, when I look at Job, his world is shattered. So all of a sudden, Brother Justin, God turns this rusty dial that's been set on blessing and giving, and he switches at Sister Stacy to taking away, and then bam, Brother Doug, the door to this vault opens where there's all kinds of cobwebs, and Job don't know anything about that because he's never been there in this place before where he's experiencing uh, 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 this, 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 this uh, swell of the, uh, 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 of the stark truth that not only does God give, but God takes away. Yeah. God takes away. And so, throughout this whole ordeal, Job is experiencing this great taking away. It's real unjustly. It is so real that, well, let's, let's see how real it is. Let's look at Job chapter number 10. Job chapter number 10, this is how real it is to Job. That Job... He, he says this. He says, Wherefore then have you brought me forth out of the womb? Oh, that I had given up the ghost, and no eye had, had seen me. I wish I had died before I was born. Wow. Wow, that's huge. Yeah, let's be transparent. Let's be transparent. Maybe all of us have thought I was going to just die. Why not just that can be real. Job was experiencing that. Job's experiencing the same thing that maybe we can experience. And he says, I should have been as though I had not been. I should have been carried away from the womb to the grave. Job said that? He said, why did you even bring me out of the womb? I wish no one had even laid an eye upon me ever, ever before. I wish that I had never been uh, brought into being uh, or that I would have been straight to the womb, to, from the womb to the grave. And so after a lifetime of just receiving great, great blessings, it's hard for him to comprehend the loss. I don't know how others are as parents, but hey, listen, my girls only have innocence. So things for so long, I'm going to protect that. You know, not experiencing taking away. You know, I don't want them to experience good, 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 good things. Maybe some of you can remember the first time that someone close to you died. And maybe vivid, vivid in your mind because that was a great loss for you. Your world was turned around. I remember the first time I ever felt great loss. It was when I lived, lived at where we did now. And Brother Doug, there was a lot of people around. And our neighbors had four kids, and they were our age. And we played with them day and night. We fought with them day and night. <laughs> you know, we did all that kid stuff. And one day, they moved away. And this young couple that could not have children moved in. It was open. It was. That's a great loss. I mean, I realized that, but as a child, it just kind of turned our world around. So that's some of my immediate of, of loss, but it was loss to me. Uh, you know, and, and life has come, and, and I've dealt with more loss since then. Um, but I cannot explain in detail to you tonight why we have to go through those times where God says, I'm taking away. So if you think I'm going to give you a great linear detail where I describe to you uh, in this uh, just uh, uh, out, uh, outline that is so choreographed that it just 
makes everything seem right. I'm probably not going to do that tonight, but I'm going to be able to give you some answers and hopefully be able to help you through the Word of God. But one thing I have discovered that although the taking away is very devastating, I can also testify to you that the taking away is very necessary. It's very necessary for God's purpose to be fulfilled in us, for us to go through the taking away. We don't see it at the time, and sometimes it's hard to find our navigation, and sometimes we're dealing with the, the loss, sometimes it's a sudden loss, so we're, we're, we're in this denial period. This can't be, this, it's just, it just can't be. You know, uh, one, one thing, and I know this is very crude, a crude illustration, but, but uh, probably one of the most things that will be impacted on my life is watching a mother see her five-year-old dying and being there and with her as she processed that. And uh, as she's there, Brother Doug, she kept saying, she kept saying, look, he's breathing, look, look, he's breathing, he's breathing. He's, look, he's breathing, look at him, he's breathing. And I would have to gently say, no, you want to see him breathing, but he's not. The whole denial and looking at that. And how do we deal with that? How do we deal with that when someone has because we have to trust God that God is not going to allow the rain to be a loss. But he's going to be a redeemer of the rain. And he's going to do something. Because biblically we can see that he does that. And as we reflect back over our life, if we will allow the hand of God to work and move, we will see that God now has liberty to bring something in a place of our loss where it is a gift of something we would have never received had not we experienced the loss. So, um, Brother Justin, would you read Hebrews 10, verse 8 and 9? Now, I, I, I understand what this is saying, and I'll talk about this when we come to the very conclusion of our Bible study. So don't think that I'm being disproportionate and taking things out of context, because I'm absolutely not. I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to make a statement about the Scripture, and then when we get to the end, I'm going to be able to look at it in a fuller way and explain it to you. So Brother Justin, Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 8 and 9, if you would. Well, when he says sacrifice and offering and burnt, burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldst not, neither hast pleasure there, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, of God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. There's a lot of information before that. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But the word of God says, He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Listen, God. God will do things in your life in the taking away that He may do the second, but He has to give you favorable position, a firm footing. He has to make your faith firm. He has to cause you to grow and multiply. Amen. And, and, and when that happens, amen, the taking away is not designed to hurt you or wound you or break you, but the taking away is that it may add something better to your work. He said this. He said, I, 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 the, the first is taken away that I may establish the second. So for us to understand in our life, when God takes something away, He allows it to happen. And I understand all this in Job's life. I, I, I know what happened. The enemy has approached God. And the enemy is working against Job. However, the enemy does not do anything that God did not allow them to do. Amen. I, I said this before when we looked at Job. You know, the enemy is like a big dog and it's on a chain. I'm always thankful for the chain, aren't you? When that big old dog comes running at you, and all of a sudden you're like, ah! I, 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 I'm going to be mince meat here. And you realize, wait a second, that dog's on a chain. It can only come as far as the chain allows it to. And so God is only allowing the enemy to come as far as he allows it to come. So God will allow the taking away. But what the enemy may mean for bad, God uses for good. And what God allows to be taken away, he has to have it taken away so he may establish the 
second in your life. And I believe the second can be even sweeter and greater than the first. And you may say, how can it be, Brother Seville? Well, let me tell you, when you bring God into the equation, He's sweeter than I. And He can make the second better than the first. And so, uh, for example, and I mentioned this a little bit Sunday morning, sometimes my messages bleed together because I'm preparing for another message, and I think it's hard, sometimes hard to separate them, you know, when you're trying to, so I said this on Sunday morning, but, uh, you know, God had to take away a lot uh, uh, to establish Abraham. You know, I don't think that's what Abraham wanted, but God allowed it because He was bringing an establishment to Abraham. And you see, God had to take away Ishmael to be able to bring Isaac. Wow, wasn't that better? And you see, God had to take away Esau to establish Jacob. And God had to take away Joseph to establish the nation of Israel. And that was a huge taking away for his father. It was a huge taking away for Joseph. But God was establishing the nation, nation of Israel. Now, can you imagine what it's like for Joshua, who's always been, and I know that he's coming up on the scene, and, and, and he's raising up to be a leader, but I don't believe Joshua was gung-ho for Moses to be off the scene, because even though he was his predecessor, he leaned greatly upon Moses, but God had to remove Moses so that Joshua could be who he wanted him to be to establish him. So the biblical principle illustrated uh, time and time again is that God must take away the first to, uh, to establish the second. He, in effect, he said, I know that you're hurting right now, but if I don't take it away, there'll never be room in your life for me to add the better. I look at my life and I see that. Now sometimes I want to just turn back and say to the younger maid, crazy you. You thought that was all so bad. So bad. But you would have never had room for this. Why can't I learn that so much earlier? Why do we struggle with it? Because God does have something better. And so He'll redeem, He'll restore. Because the second gifts, amen, need room to grow and multiply. So God has to remove the first so that the second can grow and multiply. Listen to this. In the first 35 chapters of Job, Job is asking God why. Why God? Why God? Why God? He's misunderstood by those that are around him, by his friends, and they mock him. And uh, those who once respected him, uh, now they no longer respect him uh, until he wished that he would have never been born. He, lost, uh, he mourned the loss of his children. He mourned the agony of debilitating disease that was upon him. And the, the sores just got grievously worse. And uh, 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 God isn't answering. Where are you, God? Why are you hiding from me? You ever feel that way? Job felt that way? Let's be transparent. You know, I, I'll just be honest. I dislike when people need to be so spiritual that they can't say, I've had my struggles too. Because God allows us to struggle so that we can take that change, the metamorphosis from being uh, a worm to a butterfly. Because God is establishing seconds that are better in our life. And so here he is, uh, unaware of where God was, feeling utterly forsaken by God. And <laughs> if this doesn't add injury to insult, or uh, insult to injury, I said that backwards, uh, his wife said, Joe, you might as well curse God and die. Well, thank you, honey. I mean, really. <laughs> That's, you know, like, his so-called friends, and for the sake of time, I won't turn there, but you can read Job chapter 17, verse 15 and 16, and his friends come by and says, Where, where's your hope? I can't even see any hope for you. That's the words they use. Wow. Wow. One thing I never want to be said about my life is that I take hope from somebody. Listen, sometimes in my mind, there can be that struggle of science and divine healing. You know what I mean? Because 
I see things. I've been around Sister Stacy, so I see. You know, I. But I'm not going to go on the road. And I don't care what what any physician says to me. My job is not to strip hope from someone. But my responsibility is to breathe hope. Now I may not to sometimes go in and and and, and, and help them to uh, reframe things a little bit of hope and God. But I I'll never think what someone's hope. Never, 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 ever, ever. You take away someone's hope, the Word of God says it makes the heart sick. So in whatever situation someone's in, to take away hope. But you know, Job knew that down underneath everything, he knew that he could still hope in God. Because he said, I know that my Redeemer lives. He said, I know that He lives. And he says, even though my body it may it, it may turn to to, to to waste away with disease. It, 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 it may turn to dust. He says, but I know that my Redeemer lives, and my heart yearns within me. Uh, though, though I can't find God, I know that He knows the way that I take. And when He has tried me, I'm going to come forth as pure gold. And so here it is. Job has lost everything. He's navigating. Listen, he knows all the giving and the blessing of God. And now he's navigating the taking away of God. And his friends come by. They take away hope. And his wife says, you might as well just die, Job. You can't find God. Curse him. That's a terrible place to be. But what do we do when God takes away we find that toward the end of Job's ordeal, God never explained to Job explicitly to put the great line to the way. But one thing that we learned, Sister Susan, is that God took away that God again. And so Job's circumstances began to improve. He realized that his question, why, hadn't been answered. But God had taken away everything to give him something new. His health was fully restored. His flocks, his herds, they doubled. His wealth multiplied. He regained even greater respect in the community. Listen, listen. Grab hold of your seat. He learned to pray and forgive his friends. Something he never had to do before. But God says, I'm not letting this go to waste, brother God. But you'll know forgiveness and you'll know how to pray. But the most important thing is that he learned about God. That God was always in control. Even when it appeared that he wasn't. And so God's love in both the giving and the taking away had made Job a wiser man. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job said not, nor charged God foolishly. Job said, I learned to trust Him, not in the giving alone. I learned not to love Him in the giving alone. But I learned to love him and to take him away. Wow. Listen, tonight I'm giving you information that you can store up maybe for the near future or maybe the distant future or maybe that you can apply to something in your life right now or that you can answer a question of many people saying, but I'm mad at God. I'm mad at You don't have any right to be mad at God. You don't have any right to be mad at God. God is a good God, and God has given. And, and, and we deserve death and hell. Uh, if we have blessing, it's only because of God. But God is faithful in every season. And if you will learn to trust Him in the seasons of your life where He is taking away, you'll find that He is taking away so that He has made room that He can plant and grow and multiply in your life. That is prosperity. That is real prosperity. 
The prosperity people will tell you, oh, the God's not in the taking away. That's a lie from the pit of hell. God is in the taking away. This oldest book in the Bible, God establishes that I will take away, but I will give. Trust me in the taking away. Even when you feel hopeless, let your hope be in a redeemer who lives, who knows the way that you take. And when he had tried, you know that he's going to, you're going to come forth as pure gold. No matter what anyone else says, our relationship is built on our, our relationship with God, not on everybody else's. Let me present to you, let me present to you, what do you think?